Welcome back to Shaw Spotlight. I'm here with Mayor Bill Morrow. Mayor Morrow, how pleased are you that the city has now gone into phase three of opening? Well, I think, um, you know, there's a lot of hope that the phase three that was announced by the province will aid a lot of the businesses in the community. Uh, we'll see how, you know, the community responds. A number of the businesses that are now able to, to be reopened, I'm sure, are hopeful that a lot of their customers will return, that the economy will rebound, that employees will be rehired. We'll see if people's behaviors uh, have been affected and if they'll start to go back to those businesses. But I think it's a very positive reflection on how well we've done as a community in keeping the, the numbers low so that we would be part of the reopening of stage three that the province has announced. So I think there's lots of good message in there for the city. Congratulations to everybody who's who's played a role in this, the city corporately, but the businesses and individuals who are just being very cautious. So a good sign. Uh, we're excited by it. Of course, some of the city facilities will be affected by this potentially as well. And so um, there's some work to be done from the municipal perspective. Uh, but I think for the business community, we're excited by what it may mean for them. Now, I know what made me really excited about this whole thing was the fact that it forced a lot of restaurants to open patios. And I think that's a positive thing. And hopefully they'll keep them open, even though they can open the restaurant as well. Yeah, really excited by the patio piece. We, you know, as a council, there's there are some things we can do and there's a lot that we can't do to help small businesses as a corporation. And so, uh, yeah, I brought a resolution, I guess it's six or eight weeks ago on the patio piece. Council unanimously endorsed it. We've brought in a number of little pieces from our side to, to see what we could do to support them, zoning issues, waiving fees, developing a, you know, a template for a pop-up patio. The BIAs have themselves have been very active in terms of facilitating what's going on. And so it's a really great piece. I think that um, people have been looking for this for a long time in Thunder Bay, not only the pop-up patio program, uh, but the street closure piece in uh, on Red River Road. And so hopefully some of this will become long term and permanent. I think this will be, a, you know, we're going to reflect on this, I think, in the years ahead as a bit of a changing point for us at which we made some significant decisions as a community in conjunction with the business uh, community and the BIAs and the waterfront BIA in terms of the street closure piece. So, yeah, it's a really neat piece. I think people are excited by it. The summer's been great. The weather's been warm. Mm -hmm. And people are clamoring for this, and it really makes them feel better about themselves, I think. Well, I know I've been on a few of the patios, and it's just been great. It's been so nice to be able to enjoy the summer outside of a restaurant, so not being inside. Now, you mentioned that Phase 3 is affecting some city services as, as well. What types of services is, is it affecting, and what about parks? Will parks be opening in the city? Well, ho hockey rinks, we, we actually at council last night, there was a discussion about hockey rinks. And so, as an example... That is the kind of facility that can now reopen. Uh, indoor pools are an example of another kind of city facility uh, that can reopen. So there is some discussion around the timelines associated with that. Last night at council, we advocated for administration to move forward with at least one hockey rink. I think that's what we did through resolution. Administration was looking at perhaps waiting until post Labor Day for the rinks to be open. But I think there's demand for at least one in the summer and I think financially the case will will bear itself out. So there's a couple of facilities there. The Churchill Pool I think was on the docket as well to be the first indoor pool uh, to be reopened. The challenge with these announcements, Janice, is that the province makes these announcements and that's great, but what happens often is then there's an expectation in the community uh, that the city can do these things immediately. But there, there's also protocols and guidelines that come along with the announcements on the reopening. And sometimes those aren't there right away. And when they do arrive, they do require a fair bit of work from the city's perspective to get yourself in a position to operationalize those guidelines and to be able to put into effect the ability to reopen, as well as having to bring staff back and restaff up. So there's some work the city has to do. Council then hears about it. You know, why hasn't it happened right away? So a little bit of work to do there. Yeah. Uh, but a very positive signal for sure. Well, I know my house backs onto a city park 
And it's been so weird because the swings aren't there. There's a sign up saying it's closed for COVID. And, but there's many parks in the city. So I can just imagine how, many, how much manpower it would take to get the swings back up and to open up those, those um, playgrounds again. Yeah, and I think you raised the example, the one example in the parks that I can think of, I think is the splash pads. Is, was that part of stage three or was that in stage two? I'm forgetting now. But um, yeah, I think there's a lot of people that, that are looking. Now, some of these services, of course, were already near the end of July. We've just been announced that we could reopen. For example, outdoor pools could reopen. But I think people appreciate that at this point, there's so little of what's an eight-week outdoor pool season left by the yeah. time you ramped it up. It really wouldn't make a lot of sense financially, certainly, and there's such a short season left. So some of the things, even though we can do them now, they won't be happening. The outdoor pool decision was made by council quite some time ago because that required a lot of lead time. But some of these things will reopen and we'll be able to enjoy some of them in, the, uh, in what is left of the summer. Now, with all of this stuff reopening, are you concerned or do you have any cautions that you want to say to the um, people of Thunder Bay? Yeah, it's a great question, right? I mean, we know that our numbers are low. It's a point of, of pride for all of us. Uh, but certainly with what the province has announced in terms of the stage three reopenings, which fundamentally will lead to a lot of indoor congregating. So whether it's a bar, a restaurant, a health facility, they've also announced that now you can have up to 50 people. So those facilities can reopen. You can have up to 50 people. More people will be able to congregate inside. Schools, we're not sure what will be happening with schools in the fall. I'm, I'm not sure where that's at. But if kids are going back to school, if we get a second wave of COVID-19, most people expect there will be. There will be a regular flu season that we have always, September, October. There will be more travel beginning to happen as people move around, whether it's on air or I don't know what the long-term border situation will be. Right now it's closed. I personally hope it stays that way for a while. All of those things potentially could lead to things changing quickly on the COVID-19 piece. And so, yes, absolutely, uh, that's a concern for me. It's a concern, I think, for the medical community as well. It's, it's why I had a motion to, to move to the mandatory mask piece uh, that would have been debated last night at council, but two days before the medical officer of health locally made the decision to uh, to make mandatory uh, make masks mandatory uh, in the district and and I think that's the appropriate decision for all of those reasons that I've outlined um, and so yeah there's a little bit of caution there our numbers are good uh, we want to keep them that way I know uh, Dr. DeMille announced yesterday that since March yesterday was the first day we had zero cases in the city, which is promising. And I know with the mask, that's just one way to hopefully keep it that way. Um, are there any, I will be talking hopefully with someone from the health unit about the mandatory mask, masks, but do you know if there's any exceptions to them um, wearing masks? Yes, absolutely, there will be exceptions. And so the motion that I had tabled spoke to that as well, which is why I basically withdrew it because everything that the health unit announced covered what was in my resolution. And certainly one of the component pieces uh, of that was accessibility issues and that people that are health compromised, COPD, for example, perhaps asthma. But my, my motion had asked for the health unit to define what the bylaw or what her order would look like if she did it, and she will decide what it is. But there will for sure be exceptions. She has publicly talked about that. We were looking for that in the motion that I was presenting as well. So some people are concerned with that, and that's a legitimate concern. Um, but that will be accommodated. And it's important to know, uh, Janice, this is happening all across the province now. People are moving in that direction to make masks mandatory in a number of jurisdictions. And those areas as well are having these same discussions and these same accommodations on exceptions will be necessary and will occur, I would expect, in those jurisdictions as well. So it's, nobody's not thinking about this. It's top mm -hmm. of mind for people. Yeah, I know it, it, I, I can get how it's going to be a little strange for people because it's not something that we're used to. But COVID-19 has, has kind of introduced so many strange things to, to, for people to get used to. So is there anything you're looking forward to in the next couple of weeks? Well, the, the summer has been tremendous so far. I think it's weather-wise, it's been one of the best summers that I can recall. Certainly, uh, I'm hoping that continues. It's the, what, we've got another week or two left in July as you and I speak. August, September. I hope we have a nice fall. The weather's been tremendous, uh, but nothing specifically beyond that. I mean, uh, just on the health situation generally, I think, you know, just to repeat, we're in a great spot. 
And uh, we really hope that it remains that way. The community has really bought in, I think, and certainly in terms of the, the physical distancing part of this and now the mandatory masks will. I know there are some people who are not happy with this and, and they see this as perhaps not the right policy piece. You know, respectfully, I disagree with that. I think it's the thing to do. And, and I think that people will adjust by and large. Uh, some will resist it and not want to do it. But you know, nothing is ever unanimous. There's never complete buy-in on any policy, no matter what it may be. I, I ask on that point for people simply to remember the, the people that are most at risk. You know, the higher risk categories are seniors. They are people that are immunocompromised, uh, diabetics, uh, you know, people with a variety of ailments, cancer, cardiac issues. There's a lot of people with serious health issues that are more vulnerable uh, than, than some of us that are fortunate to be healthy. So we really need to be thinking about that. And the mask piece is not about you. It's about the person you're standing beside. So hopefully people can just be respectful of that. Uh, let's let's just get through this next few months and see where we land. And I and hopefully people will adjust to the new normal. That's great advice. Thank you so much for talking with me today. Janice, thanks for thanks for taking the time to do this again. I really appreciate it. Thank you and, and have a great rest of the summer.